just like people who don't have diabetes, there are limits for healthy drinking that are recognised nationally. And if you have diabetes, then the um, amounts of alcohol you should drink are just the same as if you didn't, by which I mean um, two to three units a day for women and three to four units of alcohol per day for men and giving yourself a little bit of an alcohol-free breather two or three days a week if you can. So that advice is the same whether you have diabetes or not. Alcohol itself isn't sugary. I think that's one of the things people sometimes get a little bit concerned about. Um, so depending on what alcoholic drink you choose, it may not have a direct effect on your blood glucose. We usually advise people if they are using um, mixers to choose the sugar-free ones. Alcohol itself tends to lead blood glucose levels to drop. The liver helps to regulate your blood sugar levels, so if your blood sugar level tends to fall, the liver will usually release a bit of extra sugar into the bloodstream to prevent that happening. Unfortunately, alcohol stops that from happening, so alcohol does tend to make people more prone to hypos or low blood sugars. So, so if um, people are managing their diabetes through insulin injections or certain tablets that stimulate their body to make more insulin, they are at a greater risk of their blood glucose dropping after they've consumed alcohol. So the general advice around that is if you have been drinking more than your two or three units per day of alcohol, then you should have some sort of a starchy snack before you go to bed, just to make sure that you don't run the risk of your glucose level dropping in the night and having a hypo that perhaps you might not notice because you're asleep. So I thought it might be helpful to just take some examples of alcoholic drinks and just show you um, what, a, what a unit of alcohol might look like. So on the table here we've got some beer and um, some rum, which is representing various spirits. It could be whiskey, gin, etc. And I've also got a bottle of, of wine um, as well. I'm going to pour out um, what a unit of these different drinks might look like, what a unit of alcohol. So one unit of alcohol... Um, as beer would be a, a half pint glass here. So one unit of alcohol is about half a pint if you're drinking a reasonably weak beer, by which I mean three to four percent. Okay. So that's one unit's worth of beer in the glass there. As you can see, it's about a third of a pint. If we were looking at spirits, so I've got an example here as, as rum, but it would be just the same if you were doing uh, if you were drinking gin or whiskey. Yeah, so if you were having um, a drink in a pub and having the pub measure of a spirit, then that would only be 25 mils, which is about five teaspoons. And as we can see, that would be your unit's worth. So depending on what you choose to drink, the volume of drink that you get for your unit is quite different. And so if we do the same with the wine and have a look at what... Um, a unit's worth of wine would be. And the wine that I'm using here is about 12%, so that's fairly, fairly typical of uh, most wines that we drink. And if I pour it into our glass, it really doesn't, to me, look like very much at all. Okay, and there we have a unit's worth. For people who have diabetes where part of their management plan is to try and lose some weight, um, then it's worth remembering that alcohol is actually quite a high source of calories. So if you are trying to lose weight to improve your diabetes control, um, then it might be worth remembering that um, one of those units that I talked about, depending on which drink you have, one of those units of alcohol could actually give you quite a lot more calories than others. Um, so, for example, if you were having your couple of units of alcohol um, recommended per day, um, as, say, a spirit, gin or whiskey or something like that, then two units of alcohol as a spirit is only about 100 calories. Well, I say only, that might be quite a lot. Um, but if you compare that with having your uh, units of alcohol as a pint of beer, then that's going to be the same amount of alcohol, but over twice as many calories. Um, so I think that's one of the things that people need to be aware with of when they're drinking. Um, if you're somebody who manages your diabetes through diet and some of the tablets um, that don't um, have a, a risk of lowering the blood glucose, then actually um, there's no particular preparation required, just you know, sen sensible advice as it would be for, for anybody in keeping yourself safe. I think the key difference is if you're somebody who treats your diabetes with insulin, 
then um, being aware that it's best not to drink on an empty stomach. So your example of, of having a few drinks with a meal is, is the ideal way of doing it. Whether or not somebody with diabetes chooses to drink alcohol is completely up to them, just as it is anybody else. But alcohol can affect diabetes in various ways and it can be a bit unpredictable. On the one hand, alcohol tends to drop your blood sugars. On the other hand, alcohol contains sugar in the most part, and so that can put your sugars up. People often don't eat as much as normal when they drink. And finally, if you get a bit tipsy, people aren't necessarily thinking straight and don't necessarily recognise the warning signs of, of dropping blood sugars. And the key is to remember to eat and to remember to test. Make sure somebody with you knows you've got diabetes. I think that's a good idea in general, but it's particularly important if you do like a drink or two. You know, if you are on insulin, you should be carrying something to um, treat a, a hypo, um, a blood glucose drop, um, whether that's a few sugary sweets or a little carton of orange juice or, you know, those hypo treatments. Yes, you should have those with you. Being practical about it, you know, it's not always that convenient to test your blood glucose in, in social situations, but being aware that you just need to keep a check on things and, and take action if you need to. So if somebody with diabetes has a hypo, usually they will recognise the, the symptoms and deal with it themselves before anybody else need know. But on the other hand, if you're unlucky enough to have a hypo that is severe and that you're un unable to deal with, much rather a good friend next door to you says, you're looking a bit sweaty, hang on a minute, do you need something to eat? And they'll be able to get in early and help you fix it. For people who are taking um, insulin to manage their diabetes, as we've said, you are at a little bit more increased risk of having a low blood sugar after drinking alcohol. And I think it's also worth mentioning, um, depending on how much alcohol you've drunk, that that risk of having a low blood sugar um, can last into the next day. So, for example, um, it's more, you know, very important to have breakfast the next morning um, after you've been drinking alcohol and to be aware, particularly if you've been, say, for example, dancing or something like that, um, as well as your alcohol, that, that does increase the risk of you having a lower blood sugar for quite, quite a while longer. We've emphasised overnight, and that's the case, but um, if you're combining it with exercise, then that does increase your risk of having a lower sugar well into the next day, and just to keep an eye on that. If you're not treating your diabetes with insulin, well, e you know, exercise is a way to help lower your blood glucose, um, levels is, is, is a good thing and there's no risk of them going too low um, if you're treating your managing your diabetes with diet. However, um, if you are using insulin to treat your diabetes, then that combined with the exercise does make it more likely that your blood blo glucose levels can drop. So again, that's where the little snacks might you know, come, come in as well. Not, not huge amounts of food, but just to sort of get that balance right between the exercise and the fun and just watching on what your blood glucose levels are doing. It's a bit of a juggling act really, to be honest. Um, I guess also with diabetes we are always thinking of sugar and blood glucose levels so um, again it's worth remembering that um, people with diabetes if they're taking alcohol should avoid the sugary mixtures. Um, so for example if you like your Bacardi and cola or whatever then make sure that you do have it with a sugar-free cola. So there might be some things that affect some people um, in terms of their blood glucose, like a very sugary liquor or something like that. We wouldn't recommend those. Wear one of the, uh, some sort of identification bracelet or something that says you, you have diabetes, just in case. It's always important to t test at bedtime. Um, test your blood glucose levels at bedtime if, if, if you're able to. <laughs> um, and I think sometimes people um, may find that if they've been drinking alcohol during the evening that their blood glucose appears a bit higher than they would normally like it to be at bedtime and my advice would be you know almost ignore that don't be tempted to bring your glucose levels down um, and do have a, a snack of some sort you know a sandwich or a bit of pizza or a bag of chips on the way home from the pub or whatever um, just to make sure that you don't run that risk of your glucose dropping so I guess what I'm saying is even if you see a high level at bedtime and you've been drinking alcohol um, it's better to have a high level at that point because you know it's going to drop overnight when you've been drinking. The Department of Health advice is to avoid um, alcohol altogether during pregnancy but if a woman does wish to continue drinking during pregnancy they advocate no more than two units um, at a time on two days of the week. 
Um, if a woman is drinking significantly more than this and she's planning a pregnancy, it would be wise for her to um, cut down on her alcohol intake prior to actually trying to conceive. There's a website called the Drink Aware website that's got quite a lot of information about this and that would be a good place to turn. Of course, if you're really worried about having a problem with alcohol though, please pop and see your GP because there's lots of help available out there.